Yo, what's up? This is Polestar 1. Sexy looking car, right? Yes, it is a plug-in hybrid. <laughs> I told you guys I will not test a bunch of plug-in hybrids. There will be special plug-in hybrids I will test like this one. So the front stuff is not interesting. It's a 2-liter uh, Volvo engine turbocharged and turbocharged and supercharged so it has yeah whatever in there but well okay actually there's also a, a crank motor in the front electric and then two electric motors in the back and it has 34 kilowatt hour battery that supports 50 kilowatt DC fast charging and also it has 11 kilowatt onboard charger so yeah this car is sexy and also the hybrid stuff the electric part of the hybrid stuff is also sexy but <laughs> there's uh, stuff that will turn you off i guess <laughs> turn off stuff like this maybe we are at 82 percent and we are charging at 12 kilowatt the car estimates we will finish in about 45 minutes uh that's kind of slow what else okay interior it's a gt so let me just show you here this door is so huge look <laughs> it needs so much space i don't know if you you realize how wide this door is <laughs> so it has some um, a little door pocket there but all the materials are nice though yeah and also this car is made of carbon fiber they had to keep the weight down because it has massive drivetrain in the well the front is also considered massive the back by the way um we have um seats for um people without legs in the back and then the front is like this so they have taken hardware from volvo electric adjustable seats you go inside now there are some uh, stuff that will turn you off which is that we cannot start the car while we are plugged in you see here is the start engine while well, it has an engine but when i try to start it it just says check complete and then it will tell me charge cable remove yeah i have to remove the charge cable we won't you cannot start the car while you're charging so it means there's no way to run the air conditioning. So it's getting pretty hot in here. Ugh. But Bowers and Wilkins stereo system. We have this big center console here. We have some cup holder here. There's a button here, it's a drive mode. Just change between the hybrid mode and the sport mode, whatever. The gear selector, well, the gear knob is transparent. It's like a crystal thing. That is so weird, man. Yeah. And okay, let me see. Uh, by the way, and then here we have a little center console, but not that much. That's it, pretty much. The the battery pack is also a part here. It goes in the tunnel here. And let me show you in the back, by the way. Ooh. Yeah, you can see there's a big hump there in the back, and not much to see really. Uh, okay, there's one thing. The trunk. You guys have to see. Well, okay. I want to keep this open because we need to keep the car somewhat ventilated. The trunk space is like this. <laughs> so they, um, they put this, these uh, connectors for, out for display. It has actually two times 17 kilowatt hour battery packs that are connected together. So this is pretty cool the way they display it. But the practical part of this is not very cool because as a banana box expert, I think we might get one or two banana boxes in here. That's it. So not, not much trunk space. And in the front, well, we don't even have to look at the front. There is nothing there. It's just the, the fossil drivetrain takes up a lot of space. But yeah, and here we have the gas lid. So, and this is... Uh, well, you have to close it manually, but I feel it's, it's very light, so just show you here. Look at that, look at that. You see what I see? This is real carbon fiber. Yeah. Oh. Mm. And also, it has a, 
a spoiler, adaptive spoiler, comes up at 100 km per hour, goes down again at uh, 70 km per hour. It has two electric motors in the, on the rear axle, so you have torque vectoring. When you go in curves, the outer uh, motor will spin more than the inner one, so you can, you can actually, by doing that, control better how you want the car to, to turn. So, you know, it's like a, this car is like a technical masterpiece, but the problem is the fossil drivetrain. <laughs> but if you compare Polestar 1 to i8, which I've tested twice, the i8 looks puny compared to this one. The i8 has only, oh, let me see, I don't remember the spec. I think it was 1.5 liter, three, three cylinder uh, Mini Cooper engine, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, this one is two, Two liter. Whoa, 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 what is going on over there? Whoa, 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 get out, court, get out, court. I mean, you could just go around there and then come back here, you moron. Shit. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> um. So this one, the Polestar one, has bigger engine, more powerful engine, 300 horsepower just from the fossil engine, and the Polestar has also a way more beefy electric drivetrain. The i8 has only 7.1 kilowatt stunden battery. This one is 34. So what we're gonna do today <laughs> is to charge it to 100%. And then, well, my plan was to, well, we're gonna do a range test. I wanna do a range test, uh, test it, charge it to uh, 100%, hopefully, and then see how far it goes. According to pa the paper, it's supposed to go 100 and, 24 kilometers on pure electric so we will see how far we can get but how long do you have to stay here <laughs> that's a different story <laughs> oh man uh, let me show you guys once more the polestar one yeah what are you guys think huh do you like that shit do you like that oh, by the way this is not the wrap this color here it's from the factory Oh, it has this, yeah, 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 this is, this is cool stuff, man. You know, there are lots of stuff that is kind of cool with this car, except for the <laughs> fossil drivetrain. Uh, but okay, so far I'm not too impressed of the charging speed, but maybe the battery is cold, we don't know. So we'll see, you have to stay here for a while. Woohoo, charging complete, <laughs> finally. But it still reports pulling something from the charger. I don't know what's up with that, but... Okay, we are almost good to go. Okay, what is important now is that we start the engine. There. We want to start the engine and then check drive mode here. Oh, 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 oh. Power. Yeah, just have it on power right now. What? Pure cannot be... Huh? What? What? What is that? Pure cannot be selected due to mid. Are you kidding me? You gotta be kidding me. I was about I was about to drive it in pure. Uh... Okay, but let's just put it in power right now. We need to cool down the the cabin before we start, and then I try to figure out this problem. Okay, I read the manual. You see, there's there's actually a little manual in here. I checked the manual and then I call head of Norway, Alexander, ask him about this because he's driven this car a couple of times. And actually he doesn't know why, but he usually doesn't charge the hybrid battery to 100%. Ah, guilty as charged. No, but um, it could be something because the battery is 100. It, it seems to be at pure 100% because it was charging at only three kilowatt towards the end. So maybe something to do with, I don't know, maybe, yeah. So, but supposedly if you use hybrid, it will also drive on pure electric, but then it will kick in the, the fossil engine if it needed, but you can hear that the fossil engine is running right now and the consumption goes up, so... Um, let's do a little trick where we start driving and then until I somehow see that we can enable it again, then we start counting from there. Yeah, that's the only way. This is a weird kind of hybrid. We don't, we don't even see uh, the... The battery state of charge in percenters like we can see in the in the e new oh it was again in the keyed yeah but okay let's get going we're just getting kind of late now uh this is so weird man 
I think this symbol, this oil symbol, means that it is running on uh, dinosaur juice. You can see it here. There is a representation of what's going on. Now it cuts the fuel. Now it's running on dinosaur juice. Okay, I'll show you here. And then if I floor it, it only uses the. What the heck is. This car is kaput! Yes. You see, it's not using the hybrid drivetrain. You know, there's one theory which is that this battery is not actively cool and that it cool. It, maybe the battery is overheated in the sun and after the fast charging session. That is the only theory I have right now. And then it needs to passively cool down before it can uh, discharge again. Is it, is it, does that make sense? See, it's only running on fossil right now. I was thinking maybe if I, if I, oh, what is that? Reduce perf, what? Reduce perf, <laughs> are you kidding me? A pole star with reduced performance. This is bad. Nine. Oh, how can I wake up that uh, battery again? Uh, we are now at Nebenes. So now I had an idea that you know, when we were parked at um, Ionity, we charged, the sun was shining right here, on the back here, and I can feel that it is hot. So, I wonder if the battery was overheating. I mean, does it have active cooling? It shouldn't happen, right? But that's the only explanation now. It feels hot here, somehow. So, I, I was standing here for just five minutes with the trunk open to cool down the battery. I think the battery is here. Well, actually, you know what? The battery pack is here, but it's also part of, kind of part of the interior. It goes in there. So as I kept the AC running, then maybe the battery cooled down. <laughs> I don't know. But now we suddenly have the pure mode again. Let me show you here. If I switch, sorry for that. It's just a truck over there. But now we fire up the car. And if you dr drive mode, it's, it's available. You see? So I'm gonna switch it off. We don't wanna waste uh, that one. So now we can finally do the test. I guess we have to start from here then. Ah, oh, finally we are on the move on pure electric. So here you can see that it says pure, wait, oh, let me just activate. Uh, pilot is, oh yeah, there we go. So now, you see it says pure mode, well, it's kinda hard to see. But you can see it here. The representation here that we are now using the electric drive train and it's it's now being a rear wheel drive only so the front is resting and then as a control we can also see that average consumption is 0, 0.0 per 100 kilometers <laughs> so uh, since we start from nebenes now i think we can drive almost to that that old turnaround point before Hama and then go back again or maybe i'll yeah, yeah let's just let's just do that because when we run out we can just start the engine anyway okay very important test how heavy is this beast <laughs> okay let's see let's see actual weight front axle ooh, ooh. 1160 the whole car Tank, fuel tank is uh, foil, by the way. Whoa, 2440. <laughs> okay. We are getting close to the turnaround point. You know, from Nebenes to this turnaround point and back again is 120 kilometers. I think I'm gonna go a little bit further because look here. Now the car reports, well, GOM claims another 79 kilometers and we seem to be about 65% maybe. Yeah, it doesn't show you exact state of charge. But if you look here, you see here, it creates um, a history of uh, the consumption and it seems to be hovering around uh, 190 watt hour per kilometer, or it says, kilowatt hour per hundred kilometers just like here yeah but whatever i use watt hour per kilometer so i don't know how many kilowatt hour we have available let's let's guess 
out of 34 kilowatt hour maybe at least 31 kilowatt hours so we should be able to drive 150 kilometers you see we are already done 56 kilometers and we are not down to half battery yet but we don't know when the the engine will kick in that's uh, yeah <laughs> so um i'm not sure where to turn around i might drive a little bit further before i turn around how to say the sound system here is awesome man Bowers and Wilkins you see I think that you have a tweeter on top and then a high tone there and then bottom there mid bass and then I don't know where the subwoofer is or if that's the subwoofer another tweeter here and yeah same on this side but it sounds great I listen to Elton John now Nikita and let me see yeah, I can't play too much of it. I listen to it. The stereo sound here is just insanely good. And also the bass. You know, the bass and many systems tend to be over... over biased and too deep or too uh, overshadowing everything else. Their hair is just perfect, super linear and tight. Wow. I used to own Bowen Wilkins um, speakers at home. They sound great. And same here. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not biased. I'm, I, mean, I sold them a long time ago, the Bowen Wilkins. Now I have Dolly speakers at home. This is it. If I remember correctly, the official range on Pure Electric is 124 kilometers. And we have reached it. <laughs> And we still have 12 kilometers of range left. So in a EV, I would be sweating now, but here we don't care because we can just burn some dinosaur juice. Oh yeah, mm, 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 mm. But um, first I thought about going to um, Nebenes, but I want to go back to Ionity because um, I want to see the charging speed and everything. So uh, yeah, we should have enough juice to get there. By the way, we have a head-up display here. We have finally finished charging. It took over an hour. And what I wanted to know is how many kilowatt hours did the charger deliver? And that was 28.75. And based on earlier tests with my Model 3, I can assume that, well, it's kind of hard, but let's guess that the charger loss here is, well, actually it's technically the charging, the charging loss into the battery is 5%. So then it becomes a 27.3 kilowatt hour that the battery has put in. And then you divide it by the distance and you get 203 watt hour per kilometer. <laughs> that is pretty high. But keep in mind that this car has humongous wheels. The front and back is just insanely large. So, well, uh, it would have been slightly better if you had narrower tires and I guess more rubber but hey, it's a GT, right? It has, it has to look good. So, okay, now we know how many kilowatt hour we have. So I just have to do it. Since I'm here already, I'm gonna do the 120 kilometers per hour test. <laughs> Let's go for it. And see, this is strange because now when we try to select dry mode, we can choose the pure mode. So I don't know why it bugged earlier. By the way, when I was charging, I heard the fans run in the front when, when the car was, the HVAC was shut off. So that indicates that the battery is in fact uh, liquid cool or something, or actively cool. So I don't think it was rapid gate. It was some kind of weird hiccup. But all right, we will just reset the stuff and then off we go. We are on the moon now. So the summer is over. We are in August. So you see now, at almost 10 in the evening, it starts to get dark. But uh, you see, unlike the, what's it called again? The Kia Seed, that one couldn't do the 120 test because the motor, the electric motor and the Seed was way too weak. It was around 60 horsepower. This one has, well, those two motors combined can output 265 horsepower if I remember correctly. So this one is powerful enough to go up to 160 kilometers per hour. So this is pretty cool. I think in the future, the few EVs I will test, I will also see what kind of, I mean, the, the plug-in hybrids, 
I will also see what how they are capable of dealing with high highway runs like here so um, as usual I will drive until I'm at maybe 55% and then I head back to the starting point uh, there are a few things I don't like about this pole star uh, one thing is that uh, well it's hard to demonstrate but some, okay like now like now you see time to time the the auto stay wants to hug the right you see and then it uses the the light it just it has some adaptive uh, LED matrix headlight that goes just loco but you see now it wants to hug the right side there's some rumbling and stuff it just goes too much to the right yeah I'm not sure how to show you guys but I guess you can kind of see it and then sometimes it goes too much towards the middle it tends it tends to go too much in the middle when we are taking a slight left curve so many times I almost have to struggle against the, um, the steering wheel to try to get it back on course so it doesn't seem to center perfectly like Tesla does or many of the other systems so it's <laughs> and now let's show you the light show see it uses some some LED matrix headlights and analyzes the oncoming traffic but I get the impression it does some weird shit so I feel like I've been blinking at well, unintentionally blinking at some uh, oncoming trucks it doesn't detect stuff probably see there turn on the high beam and then it switches off that one and it felt something I don't know reflection on the sign or something and it did some weird dance you see <laughs> I'm not doing anything I'm not doing anything it just does that and from time to time it's it's fla almost flashing at oncoming trucks so I'm just waiting for <laughs> waiting for the truck to flash at me now so this is uh, cringe worthy so I think I want to switch off that automatic high beam it's just too random we are almost at Dahl now and we still have five kilometers left so uh, let's keep going yes four yeah we can just we can run it dry doesn't matter let's do uh, one lap uh, to uh, towards what's it called again uh, yeah up there I don't, know. I don't remember what it's called okay is it gonna stop now I mean it's gonna start now two kilometers of range left one kilometer left uphill okay exiting to Mugre now one oh no range left <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> no range left. What's gonna happen now? What happens when you run out of juice? Well, oh, hybrid dinosaur juice to the rescue. <laughs> 97 kilometers. All right, 97 kilometers. Okay, let's go back to Ionity. <laughs> We are back at Ionity, so you want to A, B, C as always. So I'm getting uh, 55 kilowatt now, not too bad. It actually goes fairly fast on the bottom until around 30%. Yeah. But uh, so we managed to drive 97 kilometers before the engine kicked in. And um, you know, I worked, okay, by the way, but when we plugged in here, I, I saw that we had one, what the heck? So sometimes you hear it. And then the car kind of starts a little bit. Uh, I think it has something to do with the active cooling. But okay, anyway, so I saw that we arrived at 1%. So this car will actually go down to, well, it displaces at 1%, but uh, the Korean cars, the, the, the Neuro Fossil plug-in hybrid and the Kia C that tried, they go to about 10%, 10, 12% before the engine kicks in. They, they don't go down to 1%. So, interesting observation how these car manufacturers implement stuff but um, you know based on 97 kilometers we drove uh, the consumption on the high speed test was 282 watt hour per kilometer <laughs> holy guacamole that is high man so maybe well it wasn't oh what the heck hey why you know most cars they they keep the lights on no, no, no. Okay, there you go. What, what was I gonna say again? But yeah, okay, well, it's it's high. So, I lost focus. But, yeah, so there you go. 
interesting, you know, I find it interesting to test the electric drivetrain on these uh, plug-in hybrids. But uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, like, like I said, I'm not gonna test a bunch of electric uh, or plug-in hybrids. There are a few ones uh, that stands out that I will test, the ones I find interesting and fun to test. So um, as for the whole electric uh, fossil thing, uh, you, know, you can watch other videos. Just search for in YouTube for Polestar 1 review and you should find a bunch of videos about the whole driving dynamics. But uh, short summarize for me as I've been spending some time with this car is that it um, when, when you put it in sport mode or whatever or the hybrid mode and the engine kicks in, uh, you hear a lot of noise. <laughs> And then you get some movement, but I still feel like this car is heavy and this car is slower than a Tesla or a Taycan. So what is the point of this car then? Huh? I mean, it looks damn sexy. I, I, when I saw it in Yukmuk, I was like, ooh, that is a nice car. But I mean, if you care for the environment, you can, and you don't want a Tesla, then you can get a Taycan, you know, or, if you care for the environment and you buy a plug-in hybrid, then, well, I guess you can drive to work. Yeah, you can drive to and to work uh, up to 130 kilometers per day. And then, but if if you are so rich that you can buy a Polestar One, then you probably have enough space to buy, let's say, a Porsche, a, a fully uh, fossil, some some kind of fossil that you can drive on long trips, and then you drive a Leaf or whatever. Uh, Ionic, whatever, to work, right? Because the Ionic has way more range and better efficiency. But okay, it doesn't have the comfort here, but you can even buy an e golf then. So I don't really see the point of this car. Maybe you guys see, but for me, I don't see it because people who buy a Kia Seed, they obviously don't have the money to buy two cars. They might not have the space, but people who can buy this car, they are in a way different situation. So but okay, but it's a pretty cool car. I have to admit, it's a cool car. It's nice, comfortable, but I don't see the point of it. <laughs> so anyway, that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.